So I am from a small university down in Abilene, Texas. I was actually hired on in the fall as part of a Title V grant, which is for Hispanic serving institutions. It's a grant to help promote STEM courses to help with retention. And so as part of that, we were looking at online anatomy software that we could use to help these students that were really struggling in AMP. And so we were looking at several different programs and ended up landing on Visible Body because it was by and far the best choice for our campus and for our students, just because it's so user friendly, the ease of use for instructors as well as students is just wonderful. Um, and then the people at Visible Body are just so helpful. I cannot talk enough about <laughs> how great they are. If you have any questions, if you need any kind of tutorials or instructions, they're there for you and they're amazing. So with that being said, I started teaching using Visible Body in the spring, which turned out to be a godsend because everything that we did was already online. And so for the students, the transition to doing fully online courses for AMP was really, really pretty seamless. We were already doing quizzes in Visible Body. We were already doing our labs in Visible Body. Uh, so really the only thing that changed was when we did lectures, we were all in front of our computers instead of face to face in the classroom. And so it was really great to just be able to seamlessly transition. And then that carried over into the summer I taught AMP1 in the summer and I did it fully online, asynchronous. Um, we really didn't do many face-to-face uh, -face lecture, not face-to-face, -face, I guess screen-to-screen -screen lectures uh, because everything was there for the students. And so I'll kind of walk you through, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a, a unit on muscles. And so I'll kind of walk you through what it looks like on the student end to go through that muscle unit in the lecture component. And then we'll switch over to the lab component and I'll kind of show you what I do with the labs and how I, uh, I'll, I'll show you kind of two ways, how I did it in the spring and then how I did it in the summer using a screen capture app uh, to kind of walk those students through all of their lab material. And so I have, this is the, the lab um, that we'll use. It's kind of uh, a splice between stuff that I've gathered and stuff that Visible Body has put together. Visible Body has all sorts of resources that you can use for your classes, including uh, pre-written labs that go along with their uh, modules. So I'm gonna try to share my screen. I can't talk and uh, do two things at the same time. Okay, um, so Visible Body has all sorts of pre-made resources for you. And so a lot of these courses, so this is my, kind of landing page. These are all of my courses. I've been playing around a lot. I have a lot of courses in here. Most of these are pre-made courses from Visible Body that I've just copied into my um, course management page. And so they have these correlated courses to almost any textbook out there that you can find. So for the summer, the book that I used was OpenStax. If you haven't heard of OpenStax, it's pretty amazing. They are a free source online textbook. And so this is OpenStax. It's the anatomy and physiology book. It's free, and this is what we use for our textbook for the summer uh, AMP course. And so uh, I had a little printout of the modules in Visible Body and which chapters in this OpenStax textbook uh, correlated with the modules. So they would go through the modules in Visible Body and then read through uh, the text. So I'll show you, this is the summer course. I copied this uh, from the Visible Body pre-made courses. So up here they have this little pre-made course button. You just click on that and they have um, all of these ready-made courses. And so it's pretty awesome. All you do is add the course to your account and there's a 
course that's correlated to whatever textbook you're using. Okay, sorry. I get really excited about this because it's pretty awesome stuff. So we're just going to look at the muscle module. Um, when you make a course in Visible Body, one of the first things that pops up is this getting started uh, with Visible Body. And this is really great for the students. I have the students, this is their first quiz. They have to take this getting started quiz. And it's a low stakes quiz. They can take it twice. I take the highest of the two. But this is just to make sure that they know how to work through Visible Body. And I'm gonna talk a little more about quizzes um, here in a little bit. So uh, these are all the units. It's most AMP texts are set up the same cells, uh, tissues, and then you just build on the systems from there. So we'll look at the muscular system. So this is what students see when they click here, they click on the mus muscular system. The first thing is the module, and this is the module Invisible Body. This is kind of like their online textbook. So they click on this, okay, there's a little um, description, some explanation on how to get through the modules, and then they just click and start reading through. These modules are great because they're not overwhelming. They have just enough information for the students to know what they need to know, but it's not so much that students feel overwhelmed and shut down, uh, which I think is really important, especially in an intro A&P course. Sometimes some of the texts can get, get overwhelming for the students and then they just, they just shut down. Um, so, you know, this one starts with a little video. There's a little text that they read. The videos on here are really nice. I don't know if it'll be cool or not. Um, they're pretty short. They're all about a minute or so. So the students will watch the video, they'll read the text, and then they just click on the next arrow. And they'll keep going through. It'll tell them about origins and insertions. This is all stuff that we'll talk about in the lab too. So they work through all this and they'll get to the part where so this is the part that I think is really good for students when they're starting to learn muscles. So I tell the students when they're doing this module in the lecture, have your, I don't know if you can really see it, so have your lab word bank out right next to you because the ones on the word bank are the ones that we're going to test in the lab. There are a few muscles on here that we don't cover. I'm sure you will omit muscles too, because there's, it's just too much. Um, and so I tell the students, okay, look at your word bank. And then here it's, it's pretty neat because they don't have to go and search for the muscle. You know, I used to have those really cool 3D models in the lab that had the muscles with those little bitty numbers on it. And the kids had the booklets. And if they couldn't remember where a muscle was, they would flip through the booklets, they would find the number in the booklet, and then they would search for the number on the model. And it was, it was just tedious. And if it's too tedious, you know, those lower kids, those, those D's and F's kids, just, they just give up or they sit next to the A student and then they just look over their shoulder. So, for here, like the corrugator supercilia, this is one of our muscles. They click on it and it'll zoom in, it'll highlight it in blue. The students can, you know, if they don't know how to pronounce it, they just click here, it'll pronounce it. They click the little book, okay, it'll tell them the origin and the insertion. And then they just keep clicking through until they've looked at, um, I have the muscles broken up, so we do the face muscles of facial expression first. And so they'll just work through, you know, this first little box um, and identify these muscles. And so it's really nice for students to kind of learn where some of those muscles are before we really delve into it in the lab. And so once they finish the module, um, they'll get to the end. And I'm actually going to close this out. And then they'll go back once they think they, they've learned it all and they are good and comfortable with it. That's when they take their muscular system quiz. These 
quizzes, um, the ones that I make, they're pretty short, 10 to 15 questions. This one is a dissection quiz. And so the dissection quizzes on here are really neat uh, because it says, you know, I'll pop up and I'll say select the occipital frontalis. And then the students have to select that and hit submit. And this is how I built several of my practicals because when you do online practicals, you can't have that model there. Or if you really wanted to, you could go up to the lab and you could tag your models and you could take pictures, which some of you probably did, take pictures, upload those pictures into a, either a PowerPoint or into your LMS and have the students take the practical that way. This is a much easier approach. It saves a lot of time. Um, and I, I believe that the students are still getting the same experience, if not a better experience, because you, know, you can't do this with a model in the lab. You can't like zoom in and select and hide. So um, here, you know, they just select the muscle and hit submit. Um, Try to okay. Let me close that. Leave. Um, so they'll take the quiz, and this is, you know, I think, for all of us, one of the biggest challenges to going fully online with our instruction is that we don't get to see our students' faces, and that was a big deal to me because when you're up talking about the nervous system or you're talking about um, action potentials. You know if students get it and you know if they don't get it because you can just see in their face, you know, you get those blank stares and you think, okay, I need to go back and uh, draw it on the board or say it in a different way so that I know that, that they're getting it. And I think that's the hardest part of doing this all online is that you don't know if the students get it or not. Um, I feel like a lot of times like when I send emails or when I put things out there they just go into the void. <laughs> and I, I don't know if my students get it or not so I just have to hope that um, that they do and one of the ways that I can really check for understanding is by using all of these little quizzes in Visible Body because in the quizzes I can ask questions over concepts that I really want the students to get. And so I can see if they keep missing those questions on those concepts that I really want them to get. I need to throw up a little video or I need to do a little um, explanation so that I make sure students are understanding these concepts. Um, okay, sorry, that was a little aside. Um, and then another way that I can kind of make sure that students are getting what I want them to get is with these outlines. And so these outlines are actually built, uh, Visible Body built all of these, and I just went in and tweaked them a little bit. And so these outlines are kind of notes for, sorry, my IRB popped up, uh, notes for students to fill in as they go through uh, these units. And so here, you know, the, this is the stuff that I want them to know. Um, you know, what's the term that means big or biggest? Uh, and then, you know, they just fill this out. And what I did when we were face to face, I used this as uh, extra credit on their lecture exams because you know, it was kind of twofold. If you filled out these outlines, you were going to do really well in the test, and then you'd get an extra point on your exam, which everyone loves extra credit. So, um, okay, I'm going to close that out. And then, um, so students, you know, they'll work through the module, they'll fill in their notes as they're working through, then they'll go to the open stacks and they'll do their reading. So they'll, you know, this is what they'll use as their textbook. To be honest, um, students, I used to use the Mary Ebb textbook. Uh, so does the other professor at McMurray. Those, and you know, we're not talking about reaching those A students or those high B students, no matter what you do, those A students are going to make A's, those high B students are going to make high B's. 
we are trying to reach those low C's and D's and F's and those withdrawals. That's what we're trying to hit. And those students, if the textbook is too expensive or too hard to obtain, they just won't get it. Um, and so with this, you know, it could be the best textbook in the world with all the secrets of the universe in there, but those students just, they just won't buy it. Um, so this free uh, ebook is really kind of a great way to make sure that students have access to um, some extra information that we might want them to know. But the students don't have to read this OpenStax book or their textbook to do well in the course because Visible Body covers everything that they need to know. And I say do well, I mean pass. Um, you know, if they want to make an A, yes, they do need to read, read the textbook. Um, so, you know, we go through and there's the muscular system um, and they'll just read through uh, this ebook. Um, the good thing about OpenStax too is that it's not too overwhelming um, like some of the anatomy textbooks are. That's very impressive. Um, so, you know, they just read through. It's um, try to make it as easy as possible on these students because online learning is hard. Um, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot that these students have to struggle with when they're doing fully online courses. Uh, I'm down in Texas. As of now, uh, we plan to start instruction in the fall, but with the cases going up like they are, none of us are really sure what that's going to look like. Um, we already are planning on doing fully online after Thanksgiving, and so, you know, it's just good to be prepared and have all of this awesome stuff online through Visible Body, and then you can worry about your other courses get this out of the way. It won't take very long. Okay. Um, and then, so they do all this and then we have our lab. So I have two separate courses. I have the one for uh, the lecture and then I have the one for the lab. So we'll go back. Sorry, I'm a little sniffly. And so here's the lab page for my summer course. And so here they'll just click on lab seven on the muscles. For my summer course, what I did for the labs was go and I recorded myself going through the Human Anatomy Atlas, talking about all of these structures. I would click on them, I would identify them, I would rotate, um, I would do everything using the screen capture app that I actually did uh, when we were face to face in the lab. And so instead of clicking on here, I'll, oh, let me move that, okay. Um, so in your, I have a ton of tabs open. So in your uh, visible body suite, you get all of these apps. And so the module that we worked through was in the anatomy and physiology app, that's like their ebook. The human anatomy atlas is where all of their 3D, um, images are and so this stuff is just it's just pretty awesome uh, so for the muscular system i like to just do the full muscular system view i need to move this again uh, and so it pulls up this 3d model you can turn it you can move it up and down you can zoom in you can select structures, uh, you can hide structures. So I'll kind of walk through uh, what the facial expression muscle lab looks like. I won't you know, go into too much detail. Um, I'm actually gonna take off the nervous system. So you see all these uh, yellow lines, those are all nerves. So I'm actually gonna get rid of those. It takes away his eyeballs, which makes it look kind of funny, but it's all good. Um, so once again, I'll tell my students, have your muscle lab word bank pulled up. And then uh, when we are face to face in the lab, what I do is I just project this onto the screen. Sometimes I'll have some 3D models thrown around and I'll have my students 
pull up their laptops. Um, at McMurray, every student is issued a laptop while they're at the university. And so um, I'm gonna brag a little bit because this is super awesome. They completely renovated a lab for me to use for teaching this online um, visible body anatomies um, cadaver stuff. So uh, I have movable tables. I have extension cords that pull down from the ceiling so that everyone can be on their device working through visible body while I have this pulled up on the screen and I'm lecturing. Hopefully I'll get to use it in the fall. Um, so what I do is, you know, we just, we just start and I say, okay, you know, we're going to click on, um, the or orbicularis oris. And so we click on that and say, okay, make sure that you know um, where this is. What does this muscle do? We also talk about uh, fascicle arrangements. So I say, you know, what kind of fascicle arrangement is this muscle? And so, you know, we just walk through and talk about it and then we just move on to the next, uh, the next muscle in our, our word bank. And it's really pretty awesome for, um, some of those muscles, like the uh, corrugator supercilii, that's a deep muscle, uh, you can go in and you can hide some muscles so that you can actually select that muscle and view it. Um, with those, you know, those 3D kind of clunky models, um, you know, especially with the leg, it seemed like all of my adductors kept falling off. You know, if you wanted to see a deeper muscle, you have to go and pull all the overlying muscles off. You could find it and then you have to go try to stick them back in and then, you know, inevitably one of them always falls back off. So, you know, this is just really great to be able to um, click and zoom and see, you know, some of these deeper muscles that it's really hard to see on a, on a model. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies are going crazy. And then another uh, really cool feature um, is if you click on a muscle, you know, it's highlighted in blue, it'll tell you what muscle it is, um, it'll give you some definitions, um, some pathologies, but the, if you click on the details button, um, it's really neat because on some of these muscles, they have the muscle action. And so you can actually move these around. And so you can tell students, okay, uh, depress your mandible and try to fill that platysma muscle, pulling your mandible down. And so it's kind of fun in the lab because everybody's like <laughs> trying to fill that muscle. Um, but it's, I think it really helps students to understand where that muscle is and what it does when they can actually see it um, in motion and actually see that muscle working. Uh, they can also, you can also look at, whoa, um, the origins and the insertions. Uh, and so, you know, you can tell students, if I can click on that little um, blue, you see that blue pen, you know, the insertion is on the mandible and then there's the origin. Um, one of the, I'm actually gonna exit. One of the things we like to talk about when we talk about the muscles of the um, back and of the neck, I always talk about tension headaches, and so I like to show students um, all of the origins and insertions that are on that occipital bone. Uh, and so um, it's kind of neat to tell students, okay, hey, you, you know, if you hold all that tension in your shoulders and you're all tense, what is that going to do to the base of your skull? And so um, it's neat to be able to, I can actually you know, do the details on that. You know, to be able to show students, you know, these are all different muscles that are attached to the occipital bone. Um, so it's just, you know, you can't really, you can't do that with a model. When you can, you can sit there and point, but it's different if a student has this right in front of them and they can go, oh yeah, wow, you know, that does make sense. Oh yeah, look at all that. Um, so it's really, um, it's really phenomenal that students have something like this that they can use to learn all about the human body. Um, here's another muscle action. Another cool thing is that um, you can, if they download visible body to their device, 
they have an augmented reality feature. And so they can actually pull this guy up in an actual 3D space and have somebody standing next to this model and somebody can stand there and uh, do the same muscle action. And you can see, oh, okay, so that's the muscle that um, does this. This is what it looks like on an actual person. And so it's just a really, um, really neat feature for, especially if anyone teaches kinesiology, uh, for those kinesiology students to see some of these muscle actions. I need to exit. Um, and so, you know, once we go through the uh, lab for that day, once again, I have students take another quiz. So I'll we'll actually go back to the labs. They have, you know, at the end of every quiz, they have, or end of every lab, sorry, they have a post lab quiz. And so these a lot of times are short answers because my lab practicals are short answers. Uh, I usually pull a couple of questions from each post lab quiz to put on the practical. Once again, these are some of the things that I really want them to know and understand from the lab. So they get quizzed, you know, after the modules in the lecture component, and then they get quizzed after the lab for the lab component. So it's kind of, a, two ways, actually three, uh, with the two quizzes and then the outlines uh, to make sure that students are putting things together. Um, it's taking a while to load. Let's just close it out. So I think, oh, I'll show you for, you know, when you do fully online stuff, a lot of us will be online in the fall. I think that's just how it's gonna be. For the labs, if you have your Human Anatomy Atlas pulled up, if you can't do synchronous lectures um, through Zoom or Teams, using something like, I don't know if anyone's heard of Screencast-O-Matic, this is how I build my videos. Um, they upload to my YouTube channel, and then for my labs, like here, I just put a link to my uh, YouTube video. And it just is me going through the Anatomy Atlas, pausing about a pausing about a hundred times because I have a toddler and you know, he likes to make cameos in all of my videos. Um, but it's a really great way to make sure that students are getting what you want them to get and you're hitting on all the stuff that uh, you think the students need to know. And so that's, uh, it's really helpful to be able to do that. And then just, you just post the link in Visible Body um, and they can work through the lab. So, wow, I went for 30 minutes. I was planning on like 15 or 20. Um, so I can, well, I guess I could leave my screen up if people have questions about Visible Body and we can, try to answer some questions. Great, thank you so much, Brooke. Um, so a question about the outlines um, and where you, I know you did a, you took some from Visible Body and then modified it to make your own. Could you walk through the outline again? Yeah, so the and where outlines, to find it. Yeah, that was the main question. Yeah, so there's a um, instructor resources folder that, um, that you get, <laughs> um, you can you can either put the folder on your landing page, or when you pop into any of your courses, you can just click Instructor Resources, and this is um, all of the amazing stuff <laughs> that comes with Visible Body. And so I used their, they call them the guided notes for AMP unit, and so here are all of those notes. And so I just took them. Uh, they're Word documents, so I just took them and modified them um, and then uploaded them into you know, my own my own course. So for like the skeletal system unit, sorry, I keep sniffling, it was terrible. So, no, it looks pretty similar. Um, and so, you know, you just go, go through, you could just post it just as is, and but I just went in and, and tweaked it a little bit. And I think is that, oh, I apologize, my dog. <laughs> um, is that, um, did you find that under the instructor resource tab, there's also an instructor resources course that some, you know, like this looks like um, 
Yes. So this is a full course and your visible body mm -hmm. rep can send this to you. So there are some instructor resources under that tab. And mm -hmm. then we have created, you know, even more resources in a course and your visible rep body rep can send that course to you just like Brooke had right there. So we will follow up with you, but feel free to contact me. I'll post my email and then um, for everybody, you know, any of the forms on our website that say something like, you know, I'd like a trial or a demo, those go right to my team and we respond within 24 hours, often within, the, within an hour. So uh, if you fill out a form on our website, those go to human beings. We're extremely responsive. So if you forget my email or the, you don't hear from your rep right away, please contact us through any of those forms. We'll get right back to you. Thanks, Brooke. Okay, so we've got a few more questions. I'm going to go over to the chat. Um, all right, so we've got another question about um, from Patricia about um, are you using all five apps in your course or just A and P? Uh, so I use the A and P, and then I use the Human Anatomy Atlas. The Pathology and Physiology just came out. A couple of weeks ago and so I'm gonna work on integrating some of that into my courses because I feel like pathology just really kind of gets like hooks students um, because with almost any pathology that you talk about in class they've either had it they have a family member that's had it their friend has had it and so they really want to know uh, about that uh, the pathology um, stuff so uh, the muscle premium, I don't, I don't really use the muscle premium because it's just intro to AMP. If I taught kinesiology, I probably would, um, but this is really a deeper dive into the origins, the insertions, the actions, the agonist, the antagonist, um, all of that, and we just don't go that deep. And then the physiology animations, um, those, a lot of those are built into the uh, anatomy and physiology app. Um, but these are actually really good animations. I actually used some of these for action potential propagation to kind of help my students visualize that because that is a, that's a booger to teach students. Um, so yeah, I, I, I use them all except for really muscle premium, but the pathology and physiology, I'm really excited about using. Yeah, there's a beating heart um, with some manipulation tools there that um, are super exciting. You can adjust the heart rate and there's a little lesson that walks the students through um, a little EKG. I can show it actually, um, if you want, I can do just a quick preview. And before we, let's see, so I'll share my screen. Um, all right, so. Just to give everybody a preview, there there is a lot of content. You and most of our courses do, like Brooke said, rely heavily on anatomy and physiology and human anatomy atlas. Um, and then physiology and pathology does it. It contains some of that really exciting content that absolutely gets students' attention. And just so you know, muscle premium um, really focuses on the musculoskeletal system and the key content in muscle premium that does not exist in any other app are the 3D pathologies. Actually, no, those are also included in physiology in this app here, but those are nice 3D pathologies of like a rotator cuff tear, a hip replacement, uh, musculoskeletal pathologies. And then there's also a nice uh, video series. Um, but here is, let's see, here is the beating heart. And I don't know, you can hear the sound, um, but there is the, the heartbeat sound. Um, you can adjust the beats per minute. So obviously this is, this is pretty slow. You could bring the heart rate up, get it to more of a normal level. There we go. Um, so I've got blood turned on. So I'm looking at the blood flow but I can turn that on and off. That's represented here by these, they kind of look like saran wrap. <laughs> Blood flow on and off, those are the arrows. And then here's the EKG. And again, you can pause this 
slow it down. This is a fully, all of our models you can manipulate just like any other model. So you can click on any structure in the model and learn about it. So you can see the same learning tools at the student's fingertips, the pronunciation, all of those tools are right there for them. And then up here in the right, you can walk through the cardiac cycle. So it's gonna walk through different aspects of it. Let me go back. There we go. And then we do have a view that has an exercise heart rate as well in a different model. But that's that. I will stop sharing. We'll go to another question. Let's see. Um, hang on one second. Go to the chat. So another question came in about computer requirements for students. Um, I can answer that uh, pretty quickly. Uh, it, this works in Visible Body Courseware works in all browsers except for Internet Explorer. So, you know, we recommend Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. Those are the best ones. And um, the, the system requirements are pretty, I don't know what the right word is, but it, it, it works for a wide range of students. Um, and those are on our website as well. So the, the, they need a certain internet speed. I think it's 32, I forget what the actual term is, I apologize, but um, it's, it's pretty user friendly. I don't know, Brooke, if you wanna speak to um, how students were able to use the platform if they ran into any problems. No, um, we, so McMurray gives the students, it's a Mac, or not a MacBook, sorry, HP ProBook. And so it's just one of the, you know, the, it's, it's a good machine, but it's a lower end laptop. It's not touch screen, it's not fancy. They're pretty small and invisible body works perfectly on there. The one thing that I do have to, uh, say is that you should tell your students to get a mouse um, and try to use a mouse when they're manipulating the models. It's just a lot easier. I think they are going to um, put a little joystick on the screen so that you can move it around and manipulate the model. Um, but I've just found that if you try to use the touch screen on your, um, oh, there it is. Um, you know, it's, it's just easier with a mouse. Um, but no, we've, we've never had, we've never had problems. I mean, students, you know, can even pull it up uh, using data on their phone. Uh, they can pull up these programs and run them just fine. Great, yeah, so this yeah, is the joystick. Yep, and so it's in our PathoPhys app right now, but we are adding it to Atlas very soon. Okay, so let's see, I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to Tammy and I'll unmute you, Tammy, so you can ask your questions so we can get some dialogue going. Go ahead. So all you need to do, Tammy, is unmute yourself on your end and you can ask your question. Okay. Yes. I was just wondering how you know which part of the app, whether you go into the A&P or the Atlas, you know, when you're trying to build something for your course, how do you know where to actually go within the five different apps that are in the visible body? So what I would probably recommend is just using one of the pre-made courses and they will have it set out in links of, you know, where the students will need to go to access the information. Um, so, and really, what I do is I use the AMP app for lecture and then the human anatomy atlas app for lab and uh, I can share real quick. So AMP for lecture and the atlas for lab? Yeah and so the the anatomy and physiology app is set up like a traditional AMP textbook um, with all the different, you know, if it'll pull up it's going kind of slow. I think I have too much pulled up uh, with all the different units uh, built in there. And then the Human Anatomy Atlas has it broken down by the different views. So it has, you know, the skeletal system, the circulatory system, you know, the nervous system. And so depending on what lab you're doing, that's the different view that you'll 
click on. And within here, you know, they have quizzes, they have, um, there's a gross anatomy lab, which is kind of like what you would see with one of those cadaver tables. I don't know if anyone's looked at those digital cadaver tables. Mm -hmm. They're awesome, but they're also very expensive. And so, you know, this is kind of like one of those um, cadaver tables. Uh, you can, you know, zoom in, um, you can dissect, you can select. Um, well, okay, sorry, I kind of, <laughs> I way more than answered your question, sorry. Um, but here's their anatomy and physiology. And so it's set up, you know, like a traditional A&P textbook. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I've mostly played around like with the human anatomy atlas. So mm -hmm. kind of looking at it for lab applications. So that's why I wasn't sure where you went to find the others. Thank you. Yeah. Do Thank you, um, so you're using it just for lab? Well, I haven't started using it at all. Yet. Yeah. Um, um, my, the, the best thing that I can tell you is go to this pre-made courses. Okay. Is and just find, you know, hopefully they have one that correlates to the text that you're using. Um, but you can just find, you know, like they, the Mary app is what I used to use. And so um, it gets right down here. And I so that's what, you know, I just did the Mary app correlation. And what it does is those units are set up exactly like the chapters are set up in your textbook. And then you have it all there, and then you can go in and kind of tweak what they've already pre-built for you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And then, Tammy, we do have an, an article on our support site um, that explains, it kind of does the backwards thing, because when you create an assignment, it just gives you the app. So I totally understand where you're coming from. You kind of have to know the apps. Um, but there is an article um, I'll show you. And we can also send this to you. So if you just go to our website, visiblebody.com, and then go to support. And this is also accessible from Courseware as well. If you're inside of your Courseware account, you just go to this question mark and this link, Help Center, will direct you straight to this support center here. And you just scroll down, click Visible Body Courseware because that's, that's the product. Okay. Um, click instructors. And then here it's a whole series of articles on how to do things in courseware. Oh, and okay. um, let's see. I know it was recently added. Um, visible body content and where to find it in courseware. So it's right here. Perfect. So there you go. So it just walks you through how to create an assignment and then um, it gives you those steps. And then here, here's a nice list of the actual content and wh which app to find it in. And you can see there is some overlap between the apps, but this, this should help. Right. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. I will go to the next question. Um, so there's a question on do the quiz results port to an LMS? Um, and I don't know, Brooke, if you're using your LMS, if you want to talk about that or I can, show everybody where to where to do that yeah i i don't um export them to my lms but you can um there's oh, there's a really nifty button um up at the top let me go to so if you go to your grade book this is where all of the students um grades are and you can just export it um, we have moodle um, but I just, because I only had, I ended up only having 11 in my summer school class. So I just typed it over. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's pretty, pretty easy. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, a question about how do you edit and change a quiz? That's a good one. Ooh, quizzes. Okay. Share my screen again. Um, I like building quizzes in, <laughs> in here. So um, you can just go to, we'll go to quiz bank. So I'll do me. So where am I? Wow, we've added a lot of people to our team. Yes. Um, so these are the ones that I've built. Um, 
uh, we'll look at the dissection ones because these are really great for lab practicals. I will have to say if you do a dissection quiz because it, it pulls a lot of images, you need to break them up. Don't put like 20 dissection questions in one quiz or it'll take forever for it to load on the students. Um, the student's device. So you can just go to QuizBank. Um, Visible Body has a ton of quizzes that they've already built. Oh. Um, and so, you know, like, oh, these are very common. Um, so you can just go in and say, I want some multiple choice, multiple choice quiz over, uh, we'll say over the muscular system. And so you just go multiple choice, you select the muscular system. If you want a subtopic, uh, you know, we talked about facial muscles, so we can do head and neck. And you can just go through, I'm gonna move this, um, and it'll pull up all of their pre-made quizzes. And so you can click on this and click clone, and it will, pull this in to your quiz bank and you can go in and change it and manipulate it. Um, so now I have a clone and now I can edit it. Um, if you want to keep it as is, then it makes it really easy. You just assign the quiz, um, but you can just go through, um, you know, you can change the weight of the question. You can add more questions. Um, I'm actually going to cancel. If you want to build, I'm going to delete this. If you want to build your own quiz, which is um, what I did for a lot of my exams, you can go to Question Bank and you can build your own questions. So this was um, what I did for my practicals. I would take a screenshot of a muscle view and visible body and then I would go in and tag and then I would write my own question and so to do that you just create a new question and they have all different types of questions that you can make you can do multiple choice you can do short answer which is um, what I did for all of my practicals or you can do a dissection quiz so you know if you want to do a short answer question you can uh, pull in an image. So, you know, I would do the screenshot of that muscle view. Uh, I would save it and then I would upload the image here and I would ask, I would actually ask several questions about that um, image. So I'd say, name the muscle lab labeled at number one. Um, what type of fascicle arrangement does this muscle have? Um, so I would ask several questions on that and then I would put that into my lab practical. Um, okay, I have to show you, I have to show you a dissection. So this, for lab practical three, I had several dissection quizzes on there and then I had some short answer questions. So, you know, for the dissection quiz, you can go in and you can, uh, you know what, I'll actually show you how you can do this because I'm sure a lot of us will have to use online testing in the fall. So if you want to make a dissection question, this is just, I think it's the coolest thing. So you can choose a view that you want the students to see when the, this, that was my tolerance for Um So say we're doing, um, you know, we'll just keep with the, the muscles, so. Sorry. Uh, we'll oh, no worries. My dog is barking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, why did you open the door, Bubby? I thought it was locked. Um, so we'll keep with the muscles. We can do, um, we'll do, uh, <laughs> he's got to say hi. Say hi. Hey, buddy. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yes, no. me and now. <laughs> yes, that's it. It's so hard. They want mama. So Who wants mama? 
the joys of working from home. Okay, so, know. <laughs> um, you know, well, you know, you can select, okay, this is the view that I want the students to see. I want them to see the head. And so then you can say, um, you can just type in what muscle you want and it'll pull it up on the left and on the right. So you could say, um, select either the left or the right. Um, I usually do both. Um, and then there you go. Um, you know, you gotta type a prompt. And then, you know, whatever. Um, and then you save the question. And so this is really cool. If you want to be mean, um, you can replace the view and then just do the full, um, muscular system that way they have to go zoom in and actually find that particular muscle. Um, they might have to go and hide structures, they might have to fade structures. Um, so wow, I just keep <laughs> y'all keep asking like simple questions, and I keep you know, the stuff is just it's just really neat what you can um, do on here. So, yeah, that's how you uh, manipulate <laughs> and do quizzes. Great, right, thank you. And as a follow up to that, Brooke, like, could you talk to just how what the learning was like for you, you know, to learn all of this functionality in a in a new platform? So, I actually spent um, the whole fall semester was spent really looking at the different online platforms that we could use to teach AMP, and so it was uh, between this and another program. And so, the fall, I really spent a lot of time building courses in here. Um, honestly, if you had to teach AMP fully online tomorrow, you could. Um, it would just not be customized probably to what, you know, everyone hits on different things. But really, you just could copy and paste the pre-made course, send the link, um, you send an invite link out to your students, and they could get started tomorrow. Um, to build these quizzes and be able to do all this, you know, it takes it takes a little bit of time. Um, I can, I would honestly say if you have Moodle as your LMS and you know how to work Moodle, you probably spent more time figuring out Moodle <laughs> than you would uh, figuring out visible body. Uh, just because with Moodle, it's kind of hard to get help <laughs> and um, get some training. With visible body, if you ever hit a wall or get confused, you send an email and the visible body staff is, they get back to you within the day. Um, and there are so many um, ins good instructor resources. He is not happy. <laughs> um, that, you know, it, it really makes it really easy for you to learn how to do um, all of this stuff. Or if you don't want to learn how to do it, I mean, everything, they have so much content already pre-made for you. Um, you know, you just, you just use their use their stuff, copy and paste. You know, there's no such thing as stealing in the world of teaching. Um, and so that's what I love about this is that, you know, they have everything already made for you. Um, so it just, it really depends on how much you want to customize your course as to how long um, you spend in visible body. Great. Thank you so much. And then just a few more questions and then we will wrap up. Um, there's a question on, will Visible Body be adding a histology app? And um, we actually know, the answer, the answer is no, but the good news is we have histology in the anatomy and physiology app. So there are histology slides. Um, I don't know, Brooke, if you wanna show that or I can, I can show real quick. Oh, yeah, we can. Um, let's see. So yeah, you would just, um, when you're creating an assignment, you would um, choose A&P, but inside of the app, you could search for it. The search, all of the apps have a great search functionality or the content is also, it's in the chapter where it belongs as well in terms of content. Yeah, so, I mean, we can just look at the cell. Um, I don't know what kind of, tissue you want to look at. I mean, we can go back to the tissue. Yeah, if you go to tissue or you could just search histology, um, that should pull up or just scroll. 
see. So I, it's yeah. Any of those where you see the on the on the right hand side, there are like these icons. So where you see the there you go. The four if they're called slides. So there you go. I don't know what kind of you know histology or you know what kind of tissues you want to look at, but yeah, there's some really good really good images on here. And then keep in mind as well, you know, we're looking at the web app. So this is, you know, this is anatomy and physiology, the anatomy and physiology app in a web browser, but with courseware, with every courseware account, every student gets a mobile download. So they could also be, you know, looking at these slides on their mobile device as well. They're really nice. Um, great. So there's that question. And then, um, Let's see, is there a way to customize the muscles on the app to only have the ones on your specific word bank? I find that it's difficult to find the muscles I want without clicking on a bunch of other muscles accidentally. So there, Ooh, yeah, <laughs> oh great, 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 yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, there's really not a way to, unless you take a screenshot of a view, um, let me get back to them. I, I cannot, I cannot click and talk at the same time. No worries. Um, so what I tell my students is, you know, if they have their, their word bank and they can't find a muscle, they can just click on this anatomy search and they can type in, you know, whatever muscle they're trying to identify. And it, it will uh, zoom into where that muscle is. If it's a deep muscle, sometimes they have to hide structures and then they can go back and search again until they see that little blue. Let's do this one. So you click show me, well, I can't see it. So then you, you know, they just go in and hide structures and then Oh, show me again. Oh, well, there it is. Uh, and so that's a really good way for students to be able to find these um, these structures that they can't find. You can also, um, so, you know, like we have that selected right here is where, where you can take a kind of a screenshot. You can download this, uh, this view and, um, you know, just pulls up in your uh, pictures and then you can send that to your students to show them this is how you get to that to that muscle. Uh, you can also, it's pretty cool, you can add tags and so this is how I built a lot of my lab practicals. I just went and selected muscles and added tags um, and then I went in and <laughs> drew numbers in so it looked kind of like chicken scratch but um, yeah, so you can you can tag them. You can actually do, so I have blank tags. Um, you can actually, be, because I was building practicals, I didn't want the students to see the names. Uh, you can actually turn the tags on and you know just select the ones that are on your particular word bank, download that image and send it out to the students so that they can then you know have that printed off, off or pulled up when they work through their, um, their word bank. Does that, I hope that helped. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll just add that um, coming soon, um, I think probably, I'd hate to, I don't want to throw out a date, but um, within the next few months, I think early fallish, um, we will have the ability for you to really customize these models and share them with a link to your students. So you could create an assignment in courseware with that link. You could put that link in your LMS and yeah, you'll really be able to build up the model or build you know remove layers make it exactly what you want you could draw on it really customize it to a large awesome. extent very very soon and yeah you'll just be able to <laughs> send that link to students and and that, that's been requested so we have it coming and um we are a little bit past four so i think i'm just going to take one more question for brooke and then i'm happy to stay on there i was just reading through the questions a, a bunch of the questions i can answer but i um there's just, there's one question definitely for Brooke. Um, it is, do you use your YouTube videos mainly as tutorials for the students to know how to navigate a visible body lesson? 
or do you also use them to explain, review key concepts on your own words? I really use them as if I was up there teaching the lab. And so I really use them as, you know, this is the lab, you watch the video because, you know, we had to do asynchronous lectures in the summer, but I really wanted them to get some of that stuff that, you know, wasn't on the word bank or, you know, I like to tell some little little anecdotal type stuff just to kind of tie it in and make it, um, you know, tie it in for uh, students so that they can kind of understand um, some of that stuff. I do, I have a welcome video that I do as part of my intro. And so in the welcome video, I do it with that screencast-o-matic and that's actually free um, as long as you keep your videos under 15 minutes. And I found that if you go over 15 minutes, students just blank out. Uh, but I have a welcome video at the beginning that I go over my syllabus, I go over the schedule, and then I pull up Visible Body and I show them um, some of our course and how to navigate Visible Body. And that's all in um, you know, like my welcome um, module or unit, I guess. Great. Thank you so much. So I will, um, I will stay on and answer a few more questions and I'm happy to stay on even longer if, um, if there are other questions. But at this point, um, Brooke, I wanted to say thank you so, so much for doing this today. It was such a great presentation and um, really nice to take this deep dive into your course. So um, thank you so, so much. No, of course, of course. Thank you all for uh, joining us and then, um, you have my email if you want to throw it up in the chat. Uh, if anybody has questions for me, I would be more than happy to, to answer it. So. Sure. Yeah, that would be great. I, um, I can do that. Definitely add your email and yeah, we will let you get to your, your little boy. <laughs> and I, again, I'm happy to stay on for, for the remaining questions and, and any other questions that come up. Okay, great. Right. Thanks. Thank you so Bye. much, Brooke. Take oh, care. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so hi, everybody. Um, I will stay on and let's see, I just wanted to look through the chat again. Um, so I know one of the questions was about students, um, the ability, downloading the apps and how many apps the students get if they can download the app to both their phone and a tablet. So um, they get one download per app. So they have to choose if they want Atlas on their phone or their tablet. Um, but they, they could download Atlas to the phone and they could download A&P to their tablet, for example. Um, 